It is a great privilege for me to welcome you all to this 2019 South African Investment Conference. It is a particular privilege, I must say, to welcome international guests to South Africa, the land and the home of the champions of world rugby. I hope that uh, some of you landed here a few days ago and yesterday. You could feel the vibe and you could feel the energy of South Africans after winning the World Cup. And I know that some of you were a little bit inconvenienced as you arrived because you had many South Africans coming to the airport to welcome our champions. We apologize for the victory. Ladies and gentlemen, last year we announced our objective to raise $100 billion, or better still, translated into our currency, at the time, 1.2 trillion rand. In new investments over five years with a view to addressing low economic growth and reducing unemployment in our country. It is now exactly one year since the inaugural South African Investment Conference, where local and international investors responded wonderfully to our call and stood on this platform to make investment announcements totaling nearly 300 billion rand. Of the 31 projects that were announced on this platform last year, Eight projects have been realized and completed, meaning that the money has been spent, factories have either been built or facilities improved, and uh, workers employed, and all has gotten away very well. Seventeen are in construction or at implementation stage. In total, this represents 238 billion rand of investments that were announced last year. This is a phenomenal achievement by those who stood here to announce those investments. And in many ways, it is gratifying to see commitments that were made at this conference last year materializing in the form of new factories, new facilities, new production lines, new products, as well as new services, but more importantly for us in South Africa, the new jobs that were created flowing out of these investments that were made. I have had occasion to be present at some of these factory and facility openings and have seen with my own eyes the optimism and commitment of the business owners, the management teams, and the workers in all of these establishments. As those facilities were opened, you could see that their hearts and everything else, including their hands, were really lifted. I am pleased to see so many of you here from our own country, as well as from as many as 22 other countries, as Minister Patel said. It is pleasing to see that investors continue to consider South Africa as a country with much to offer and a viable and profitable investment destination. Indeed, we have a lot to offer in the form of our people in natural and mineral resources with a young and able workforce we also have world-class infrastructure, sophisticated telecommunication systems, and a well-regulated financial and banking sector. There is rule of law in this country. Our judiciary is independent and fiercely independent for this matter. And our legal framework is strong, especially around commerce, taxation, maritime issues, competition, intellectual property, property rights, and indeed, 
other basic human rights as well. We have a vibrant civil society, a very progressive labor regime, and an independent and a robust media. Our democracy is strong, but it is also robust and wonderfully noisy. Very, very noisy indeed. If you look at our uh, members of parliament uh, debating in parliament, you will think that they, they are so rowdy that they will not be able to make any laws. But they make sensible laws in all that rowdiness. But our institutions are also durable, confirming the political stability of our body politic over the past 25 years and without any shadow of doubt into the future. Yet we are also a country which has many challenges. We are also a country which carries the horrible scars of a sad and horrible past where the color of one's skin tended to determine one's livelihood and future. Now, despite significant progress over the past 25 years, the legacy of our divided past has left many of our people without good skills, without assets, and without jobs. All these factors have in many ways combined to exacerbate the poverty and the inequality that we see in our country. And in navigating our way from the horrible past of apartheid misrule into a democratic future, we have improved the lives of millions of our people and we have empowered black people who were the main victims of apartheid policies through policies that we have now adopted, like radical black economic empowerment, the empowerment of women and young people remains the main focus of our efforts. The lives of many of our people in South Africa have improved. Over the last decade, our economy has barely grown. Investment has dwindled, and the rate of unemployment has also increased. Today, we are still reeling and feeling the effects of several years of state capture and corruption, the erosion of important public institutions, and the resultant policy malaise. Working together, we have made much progress in implemented the policy reforms that I spoke about last year at this conference, creating policy certainty, creating policy consistency and predictability for investors as well as for our citizens. We have acted decisively to end state capture and are rebuilding the capacity of the state. We have fostered greater policy coherence and are improving the alignment across the different spheres and entities central to our efforts to ignite growth as well as to create jobs. It's an ambitious execution-oriented industrial strategy which is founded on partnerships between government, labor, and industry. It prioritizes growth in important sectors such as the automotive, the clothing and textile, gas, chemicals and plastics and tourism, renewable energy, our oceans economy, agriculture, mining and beneficiation, the digital economy and high-tech industries. Today we will witness the signing of master plans for the poultry and clothing and textile footwear industries this will lead to the giant retailers in our economy increasing local procurement, an area of great importance for the people of our country, that we should have more and more local procurement by economic actors in our economy. To this end, we have established 10 special economic zones in strategic locations around the country 
where investors are able to produce and export value-added products. Yesterday, I was privileged to attend the launch of a new automotive special economic zone in Tswane, the capital of our country, a partnership between the Department of Trade and Industry, the Gauteng government, just led by our Premier David Makura, the city of Tswane, and the Ford Motor Company of Southern Africa. Now, this automotive SEZ underlines the value of strategic collaboration and partnership in the revival of our economy. This is the compact making and building in real practice. As a major boost to manufacturing localization and job creation, nine companies have already confirmed their intention to set up factories in this special economic zone in Tswane that I visited yesterday and did the sword turning. They will do so by January of 2021, with some coming on stream well before this date. This will entail an investment of around 3.6 billion rand and the creation of 6,700 jobs, consolidating South Africa's position as the auto hub of the continent. The Ford Motor Company has said that they intend to use this as a springboard and a hub to export into the rest of the continent and indeed the world. It is a sign of the enthusiasm for this opportunity that the first phase of the automotive SEZ was oversubscribed. A few weeks ago, we launched the Mara mobile phone factory in the Dube Trade Port Special Economic Zone in KwaZulu-Natal, in Durban, following the commitment that was made at this very platform by the Mara company. Rapid industrialization is critical if we are to reap the benefits of the Africa continental free trade area which entered its implementation phase in July of this year. The other key priority is to deal with ESCOM's debt as part of the restructuring process and taking urgent measures to significantly improve operations, to cut costs and to increase revenue at the ESCOM level. The South African Investment Book, ladies and gentlemen, that we will present at this conference illustrates just how much potential with regard to investment opportunities we have in our country. Investors do indeed have much to choose from. And we could say that investors are really going to be spoiled for choice. Here in Gauteng, the country's industrial powerhouse and financial capital. We have enormous opportunities, which were exemplified by how a number of companies, including the one I alluded to yesterday, has opted to increase its own capacity to manufacture more vehicles and export into the continent and into the world. One of our other provinces in Pumalanga, which is the source of much of the country's energy Brimming, it brims with opportunities in tourism and agriculture. Limpopo, which is a province north of this province where we are, has diverse mineral deposits and fertile soil. And the Northern Cape is well endowed with mineral resources and is the home of the largest solar farm in the Southern Hemisphere. The Northwest province with the world's largest platinum reserves, has great potential for a mining special economic zone that we are looking at. The Free State, with its abundant maize, wheat, and livestock production, also has enormous opportunities in a number of other areas. And the Western Cape, a tourist mecca, whose wines are renowned around the world, has enormous other opportunities as well. And there is the Eastern Cape, a leader in automotive exports and a growing renewable energy industry as well. 
KwaZulu Natal, with the largest container port in sub Saharan Africa, is thrives in tourism as well as in the maritime sector and is undergoing enormous and rapid growth. The South Africa that we are presenting to you here today is not just the South Africa of the here and now. It is the South Africa of the future. It is a South Africa that is interconnected, technologically advanced, and sustainable. But it is also a South Africa that has embraced development and is growing exponentially in a number of areas. And it's education, health, and many, many other areas. Already South Africa is riding the wave of scientific progress to meet the needs of citizens and overcome its developmental challenges. To support sustainable and climate smart agriculture, farmers are already using mobile applications to track their finances and to sell their produce on the open markets. Drones are now being used in our country in crop management and pest control. Africa's first solar-powered airport is in the city of George, in the southern part of our country. Right here in Gauteng, a BMW plant is being powered in part by biogas generated through agricultural feedlot emissions and food waste. South Africa is a land of many contrasts, but it is also a land of enormous opportunities. On one hand, we face substantial developmental challenges, but on the other hand, we are pushing the frontiers of excellence and innovation, and we are reaching out to build partnerships with the continent and the whole world and we are a country that absorbs knowledge on a continuous basis. And we seek to benchmark ourselves with the good things that many other countries do. Today, we see the signing of the agreements to set up business councils with Japan, following my discussions with Prime Minister Abe a few months ago, and with the United States business community, who are also here. There can be no better time to invest in this dynamic growing economy than now. I look forward to several companies making pledges today. And that is why we have made this stage so large. <laughs> so large so that companies can come and make their pledges. And we do this not as a gimmick. We do this after close and deep collaboration with the various companies. Last year, as I said, we sought to raise 300 billion, and we did. And 200 and almost 40 billion of that is now committed and is now working. The other portion, the 60 billion, is going through the regulatory hoops. And for those who doubted right at the onset, and many people were very critical dismissing this whole effort that you're all involved in and saying this is just a talk shop. And I'd like to say to them, this is no talk shop. This is serious business. We are involved in serious business.